In today's video, I'm going to be telling you what all the gun mods in 7 Days to Die do. But I'm not here to just insult your intelligence, rather than just read what the wrong in-game descriptions say an attachment does. I've gone into the game files, and I've tried my best to discern the exact effects of each gun modification so that you know exactly what each modification does, and what weapons you can use it on. Also one last thing to get out of the way is a big thanks to Kane's Corner for helping me out with some of the confusing XML files. As some of you may know, Kane is the developer who created the Darkness Falls mod, and he's currently doing a great developer let's play of Darkness Falls over on his channel, so if that interests you, be sure to drop him a sub. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. So if you're new to 7 Days to Die, you'll want to watch this part so I can explain the quick basics of weapon modifications, otherwise skip ahead. So the first thing you'll want to know how to do is how to attach a modification to a weapon. Once you have a weapon mod, which you can find in the end of dungeon loot, trader inventories or you can craft yourself, you want to select the weapon you want to attach the modification to in your inventory and either click modify or press W. This will open the weapon modification menu. One important thing you might notice is that whenever you open the modification menu, any bullets in the gun will be unloaded from your gun and put back into your inventory. This has left me needing to reload at the worst possible moment at least a hundred times, so definitely keep that in mind. So you'll see some slots in the modification menu, one of which will always be a cosmetic slot. You can click on a die and put it in that slot to change the colour of the weapon. You can also shift click and it will automatically slot itself. The other slots will vary in number depending on the quality of the weapon, which is indicated by the number under the icon, 1 being the lowest and 6 being the highest. At quality 1 and 2 you will have one modification slot, at quality 3 and 4 you will have two modification slots, at quality 5 you'll have three modification slots, and finally at quality 6 you will have the maximum of four modification slots. If the mod you have is compatible with the weapon, the icon in the top right of the mod's icon will pulse green, otherwise it will be greyed out. To put the weapon into the slot, you can click and drag or you can shift click. The slot that the mod goes into does not matter whatsoever. Equipping any weapon mod, even just a flashlight, will increase weapon damage by 10%. It's always good to put a weapon mod on a gun if it doesn't hinder the usability. With the basics out of the way, let's get in depth with gun mods and what they do exactly. One thing I want to clear up really quickly before we begin is that not all weapon mods are compatible with each other. So in this section I'm going to group the mods. Unless I specify otherwise, assume the mods in a given category are incompatible. The first category is barrel modifications. The first barrel mod is the barrel extender. The barrel extender increases the effective range of your gun. Specifically, it increases the distance before your weapon damage starts to fall off by 20% and increases the maximum range by 20%. It also improves a statistic called weapon handling. Weapon handling is how tight the crosshair becomes when you aim down sight. It improves it by 5%, so when you aim down sight the spread will be 5% tighter. However, it also increases the spread of hipfire accuracy by 10%. This means that the weapon will have a 10% larger spread when not aiming down sight. And it also increases the severity of vertical recoil by 10% and horizontal recoil by 5%. The barrel extender works on all firearms except the blunderbuss. Next up we have the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake decreases the severity of vertical recoil by 25% and horizontal recoil by 15%. It also improves the weapon handling by 8%. Once again that's how tight the crosshair is when aiming down sight. The muzzle brake is compatible with all guns except shotguns. Sneaking up on us next we have the suppressor or the silencer. The suppressor reduces the noise you generate by a percentage. I was unable to find the exact percentage but it means that weapons are generally quieter like pistols are much better to attach a suppressor to because they will be quiet, whereas the Desert Vulture for example will never become a viable stealth weapon because it's just too loud to begin with. The suppressor also reduces damage by 15% so once again much better on generally weaker weapons. The damage reduction however can be removed by collecting all 7 of the Urban Combat perk books. It also reduces the damage fall off range by 20% and reduces the maximum range by 25% so the suppressor is a poor choice for a sniper rifle. The suppressor can be equipped on any gun except the magnum, the blunderbuss and the rocket launcher. Yes, I'm including the rocket launcher as a gun. Next up for the shotguns we have the sawed off barrel. 
barrel, which decreases the maximum range and damage fall off by 15%, and it also sets the weapon spread to 120%. This can only be attached to the blunderbuss, the pump action shotgun, and the auto shotgun. A very niche alternative we have is the duck build mod for shotguns. This weird mod reduces vertical spread by 45%, but it increases horizontal spread by 75% leading to this very unique spread pattern. This can be attached to all shotguns and yes this does include the blunderbuss. The last barrel modification is the shotgun choke mod. This reduces spread by 40% and is equipable on all shotguns. The next category is the light mods. The first light mod is the laser sight mod. This improves hip fire and aim down sight spread by 20%. It also adds a red laser that comes out of the gun. The laser can be toggled by pressing F. Interestingly, as of alpha 19.4, it doesn't seem to matter if the laser is actually turned on, it will simply always give you the accuracy bonus if the weapon mod is attached to a weapon. So if you don't like the red laser, you can turn it off without any downside. The laser sight can be attached to every gun. On the other hand, we have the flashlight mod. This allows you to toggle a flashlight, similar to the helmet flashlight mod or the flashlight item. You can press F to toggle it, and there is no other effect granted by the mod, so avoid it if you can. It can be equipped on all guns. Next up, we have the scopes. The first scope is the reflex sight. The reflex sight adds a red dot sight in place of the iron sights of the weapon. It also improves weapon handling by 30%. It can be attached to every gun except the double barrel shotgun, the blunderbuss, or the M60. Second scope is the two time scope. This scope tightens spread by 10%, or on weapons affected by the dead eye perk, it will be reduced by 20%. It will also increase the damage of scoped dead eye governed weapons by 10% if you have. Volume 1 of the Sniper Perk Book. This cannot be equipped on the M60, the Blunderbuss, the Double Barrel Shotgun, or the Auto Shotgun. The next scope is the 4 times scope. This tightens spread by 18% on normal weapons, or 36% on Deadeye weapons. Once again, it will increase the damage of scoped Deadeye governed weapons by 10% if you have Volume 1 of the Sniper Perk Book. If you ADS with a 4 times scope, you will actually only be at 2 times magnification. If you want to get to 4 times magnification, you need to use the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. This can be equipped on all 7.62 weapons except for the M60 as the M60 cannot have any sight mods. The final scope is of course the 8 times scope. This tightens spread by 50% and also it benefits from volume 1 of the sniper perk book. The 8 times scope can only be equipped on the dead eye weapons and again you'll have to scroll to reach full magnification. Next up, we have the trigger groups. The semi-automatic trigger group will set a given weapon to semi-automatic, meaning you have to pull the trigger every time you want to shoot. It also increases the maximum potential fire rate by 10%, meaning putting a semi-auto trigger mod on a weapon that is already semi-automatic will still have an effect. It also increases something called the incremental spread multiplier by 5%. I can only assume that that means the crosshair will expand 5% more severely when the weapon fires, but don't quote me on that. The burst trigger group sets a given weapon to fire 3 shots whenever you pull the trigger. Again, it increases fire rate by 10% and incremental spread by 5%. Then of course finally we have the full auto trigger group. This sets a weapon so that if you keep the trigger held it will continuously fire. It also increases the fire rate by 12% and the incremental spread by 6%. All of these trigger group mods can be equipped on all guns except the magnum, the hunting rifle, the blunderbuss, the double barrel shotgun, the pump action shotgun, rocket launcher and the M60. Coming up next we have arguably the most important modifications in my opinion, the magazine size modifications. First we have the shotgun tube extender. Now in theory this will increase ammo capacity by 37.5%. Given that it can only be added to one weapon, the actual practical effect is to add 3 extra shots of capacity to the pump action shotgun, which as of alpha 19 is the only gun compatible with the tube extender. Next we have a more versatile mod, the magazine extender. This increases ammo capacity by 50%, I didn't think it was that high either. It can be equipped on any gun with a magazine which is most guns excluding the magnum, the hunting rifle, the pump action shotgun, the double barrel shotgun, the blunderbuss and the rocket launcher. Kicking up a notch we have the drum magazine. This increases ammo capacity by a massive 100% doubling your magazine size. 
It also slows reload by 25% but there are a million ways to speed that up, one being the bandolier mod for the chest or leg armour. The drum mag is less versatile as it can only be equipped on the SMG, AK-47, tactical rifle, M60 and auto shotgun. This last category of mods I'm calling general mods as they don't conflict with any other mods either outside this category or within. First we have the bipod. This will increase the tightening of weapon spread by 8% on normal weapons and 17% on deadeye weapons. It will also increase walking and hip fire spread by 5% making it a bad choice for hip fire weapons. It decreases weapon handling on most weapons by 5% making it a bad choice for most weapons except for the deadeye weapons as on deadeye weapons it actually increases handling by 35% which in practice gives it a 30% better weapon handling of the 35% minus the 5% for all weapons. This can be attached to all 7.62 weapons. Next we have the foregrip. The foregrip decreases spread by 15% when walking, hip firing or crouching. It increases weapon handling by 5% and reduces recoil by 50%. This can be attached to any two-handed weapon and excludes pistols and the rocket launcher. Next we have the retracting stock. This simply reduces hip fire spread by 15%. This can be attached to all snipers, shotguns, the AK-47 and the tactical rifle. Not to forget we also have the rad remover. This mod does as its description says by stopping the health regeneration of irradiated enemies for 90 seconds. This can be equipped on all guns. And then there is the hunter mod. This increases damage to players and animals by 100%. A must have for PvP. Again works on all guns. Finally, we have the cripple him mod. This gives a 20% chance to cripple an enemy's leg for 5 minutes. On players, this reduces movement speed by 30%. Against zombies, I don't really know because zombies movement speed in 7 days to die is based on the animation the zombie has, interpolating it across the ground. And I am not an animator, so I have no idea what the effect does to the animation, but in practice it does seem to slow down the zombie, which works for me. So this video was already way too long and I undoubtedly got something very wrong because this was a really challenging video to make so be sure to check the comments for someone correcting me on something. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and if you want to see more in depth guides like this for 7 days to die then hit that subscribe button but with that thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.